Good evening, everybody from Botswana, Africa. I'm in Cabron. And as you can see, the sun is setting behind me. And if I turn slowly, you will see the school or the administration building behind me. And then somewhere back there is the moon. You'll see the moon is already in the sky. Um, it's a beautiful evening here in Cabron. Um, there's uh, people are not out. They are taking the government shutdown very, very seriously because the Botswanan Defense Forces, or the BDF as they are called here, are out enforcing it. But anyway, today I want to talk to you about Philippians 3 and 2 because Philippians 3, 1 through 15 is my memory passage for the next few weeks. Well, for this week. Um, so Philippians 3 and 2 says, Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the... Hold on. Beware of the concision. In the Amplified Bible, it says, Look out for the dogs, little the Judaizers, the legalists. Look out for the troublemakers. Look out for the false circumcision. Those who claim circumcision is necessary for salvation. And the complete Jewish Bible puts it like this. Beware of the dogs, those evil doers, the mutilated. And... Then lastly, it says, steer clear of the barking dogs, these religious busybodies. All bark and no bite. All they're interested in is appearances. Knife-happy circumcisers, I call them. So beware tonight. Beware. In this day, we must know those among us who are only there to cause trouble. We must be the ones who follow the Bible, knowing how to do as it says in Romans 16 and 17, where it says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offenses, contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. It's time to walk forward, not just understanding the Bible, but living it with wisdom and discretion. Beware, in this day, we must know those who have refused to allow God to mold them, sharing their scripture more perfectly with them. We must be ones who lead by example, living what we teach and preach by living a life, exemplifying Romans 6, 1 and 2. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Beware, in this day we must know the responsibility of being chosen for such a time as this. We must be people who think outside the box to deliver the word of God to all nations, as it says in Acts 1 and 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. It's important we beware. In this day we must know how to handle people in the word of God with dignity, mercy, and love. We must be people who understand 1 John 4 and 8. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Beware. In this day we must be very careful, but not so careful we forget the souls of the lost we are here to reach with the gospel. We must flow in the anointing, being very careful not to become religious busybodies like Jesus says in Matthew 9 and 37. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Why did I choose that verse? Well, because busybodies don't have time to work for God. They're too busy making trouble. But those that really love him, they have time to, to work for the Lord. They have time to make God number one. Because they're not all interested in making trouble. They're all interested in saving souls. So beware. In this day, we must know how to handle people in the word of God. And be very careful, but not so careful that we forget the souls of the lost we are to reach with the gospel. It's so important we get that. Then beware. In this day, we must realize we can no longer live like we used to because the world has shifted and God is bringing us into a new dimension. We must learn to live in this new dimension, walking in, understanding of Mark 13, 11. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak, neither do ye premeditate. But whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye, for it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. We must stick to the scripture, assuring we do not add or take away from its importance. Remembering as Jesus said. And we must, in Matthew 5 and 18, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall no wise pass from the law till all shall be fulfilled. We've got to leave the legalism behind, folks, when teaching holiness and teaching as a matter of the heart and increase power with God. 
aware. In this day, we must know how to handle people. In this day, we must realize we can no longer live like we used to. And in this day, we must watch for those claiming their hearts are circumcised, but in reality, they're not. We must know how important it is to have been chosen to live in this day, being truly, as it says in Romans 2, 28 and 29. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Beware, in this day, we don't have time for stupid anymore. Either you're in or you're out. We must not say we are Christ-like, but we must live Christ-like. Even with our challenges and opportunities for miracles, we will be a casualty, as Jesus said. Matthew 7, 22 and 23. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew ye, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Beware, I say, beware. We have to understand these things. It's so important that we know how to beware during this day. Because now that we have taken to the airwaves, we have opened up a new realm of demonic activity against us that we had no clue we were opening. For those of us that have traveled internationally, we've dealt with it for years on the foreign field. But now it's open to all of us. So we also need to remember those that aren't saved tonight. And folks, those of you that aren't saved and are watching this, if you'll realize, read the book of Acts, especially Acts chapter 2, where they said unto Peter, Men and brethren, what must we do to be saved? And Peter answered them and said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's so important you open yourself up to that and that you realize that today's the day. It's time. It's nigh time. You've waited almost too long. So we've got to get our acts right before God. We've been given a space, and the space is so important that we act in it, and we walk in it, and we know what we're doing. So let me pray for you. Jesus, I love you tonight. I thank you for all you've done for us. You've magnified us, God. You've been so, so good to us. You've blessed us beyond measure, Lord. While the sun is setting, we have time to make things right with you, God, before the moon comes up and it is night in our world again, Lord. We want to know, Lord, that you are alone are with us, that you are walking with us, that you will be with us, that you will take care of us. Wrap us in your arms, Lord. Cocoon us. Lord, we rebuke any spirits that are trying to attach to us or take or go into our souls, Lord. We lock the doors tight against them. And Lord, we ask you to put peace and happiness and healthiness and your power in that place so that when we move and walk in your being, we are people of your power and people of the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we thank you for tonight, and we ask you, Lord, for those in America to give them a blessed Sunday, and Lord, those around the world to give a blessed Sunday, and those of us that the night is dawning to give us a blessed evening and blessed peace in your arms, we pray as we rest. In Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord bless y'all. Good night.